Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Dielectric Media Podcast. I am Doug Schlobotnik, and today I'm going to be doing our segment called Music That Matters. Uh, I wanted to highlight the band King Crimson in this episode. Uh, This band has been around since 1969. That was when their first album was released. That album was called In the Court of the Crimson King. Um, And it was widely... It, well, the band has been widely uh, viewed as the very first prog rock band uh, that ever existed. They are pretty much the godfathers of prog rock, uh, and rightly so. I mean, they were the first ones to use crazy, bizarre time signatures that uh, will blow your mind when you listen to them, and um, they went out of their way to make their music a lot more difficult than what was going on normally. Uh, in that uh, time. Uh, Their lineup has changed considerably. They've gone through 19 different members. Um, Robert Fripp is the only member that has stayed consistent. He has been the guitarist since uh, 1969. uh, He's always been a member in the band and is the only one who has stayed consistent. Uh, at around 1981, Adrian Ballou joined the band. He was a uh, producer, um, and he really brought a new songwriting element into the, the band. He plays guitar and uh, is the vocalist now. He uh, pretty much from his point on is my favorite King Crimson everything uh, before that is still really good but uh, my favorite stuff from them is uh, after he joined uh, my the, the first album I ever bought from King Crimson was Thrak which pretty much just exploded my brain it was one of the best albums I've ever listened to and left me wanting more and more King Crimson. Uh, Thrak is kind of a bizarre album. My favorite song off of it is called uh, Dinosaur, which (laughs) kind of takes the perspective of a dinosaur as like a fossil. It's crazy weird. And... A a couple of the songs that I would say pretty much define King Crimson would be uh, Frame by Frame, which has a guitar part that's in 7-8, and the second guitarist drops the last note of every phrase, and it gives a very bizarre kind of doubling chorus-y effect. And, like... I don't know, it's, it's kind of, you can't really explain it. It's one of those things where you really want to go and listen to it. Uh, if you listen to Frame by Frame, it starts this particular part at about two minutes in, and then the outro of the song is just the guitars doing this rather bizarre, complicated rhythmic structure. Uh, and that... It's probably one of the more defining songs of theirs. That's uh, when I saw them live. They played that one. I they think they also played "Dinosaur" and "Red" and "Elephant Talk" from some of Tony Levin stuff. And uh, Tony Levin was just amazing at their concert. I'd never seen anybody play the bass or Chapman stick like he does. Um, let's see. Uh, I'd have to say. Well, I said Frame by Frame and Dinosaur. That's another really good one uh, the, that you should listen to for this group. And that's pretty much about it that I want to talk about for uh, King Crimson. There is another song that I would uh, recommend everyone listen to, uh, unrelated to King Crimson. Uh, it is 
Yesterday by Ray Charles, the uh, cover from the Beatles. And when I first heard it, I was just blown away. I, I thought it was amazing. Um, so those are the three songs that I'd recommend you go listen to. The Frame by Frame and Dinosaur by King Crimson. And yesterday, the Ray Charles version of the popular Beatles song. Well, that wraps it up for me. This has been a Dielectric Media Podcast, and I am Doug Slobotnik. Y'all have a good evening.